outro cast. Wow, right on time. Right on time. I, I try to be a, I try to be early though because my husband says that you're on time if you're early and you're late if you're on time. You know, so I don't know how we even came together. <laughs> that was going to be my next question. I was going to say, were you always on time, or is that something that happened later in life? Um, no, I, I'm just I, I I just like to take my time, and and I have too much faith in faith. <laughs> that is great that I'm supposed to make this flight. Like, so back in, the, uh, when it, in Atlanta, when everybody was flying out at the same sure. time Monday morning, it, the, the airport, I mean, you would walk on to a plane and every one of them would be WCW, right? And I'm always the last person on the flight. And even like among the girls, they always said, okay, watch. Who wants to bet that, you know, Chase is the last person on the flight? But I always didn't see, I, I always did not let them see me sweat because I would be running through the airport and right as I'm coming down and right before I walk into the, um, on the flight and the plane, I would just, and I would just kind of walk leisurely in like I've been hanging out for an hour, you know, but yeah, so. Always kept your cool. Well, before I ask you about Mama Bear brands and Ring Along and all that, the first question on everyone's mind is going to be, where has she been since she left television in 2001? Is there an easy answer to explain that besides motherhood and family? Well, no, it was after 2001, you know, and, and, and our girls are the core group. We did not want to split. We were like, you know, it's like people, the universe was trying to separate us and we're just kind of one of these like, no, you can't <laughs> go. We have to do something together. Yeah. So, um, so I don't know if you know, but we tried the music industry because at the time, I think uh, the Spice Girls were actually kind of on their way out and all these boy bands were taking off. So mm -hmm. we were approached by a producer and, and, and if you think about it, I mean, you know, we were kind of like that wrestling version of the Spice Girls with mm -hmm. all these different personalities and different looks. And um, so we tried that for a couple of years. Um, I have to say that most of the girls, they were really, I mean, on their own, amazing singers, except for me. So um, I just kind of like sit in the back and be well, and yeah. Well, yeah. in the Spice Girls, Posh Spice, not really a singer. You know, she didn't put out any solo albums. So right. all those groups usually had one person and they would make them They rap. could carry it. Right, right, yeah. right. Could you I mean, rap at least? Like, you're right. There's like the one lead singer, and then we all were kind of like a backup somewhat, but they made it look like everybody contributed, yeah. right? But there was a lot of digital cleaning going on in between. But um, and then after that, uh, you know, and and I'm so glad that we had the opportunity with the name was Diversity Five D Five, because I think it would have been it would have been too much of an, of an abrupt cut of the um, umbilical cord, you know, um, after March of, two, of 2001. So it gave us two years to really see, okay, can we, you know, and so we were so close together that we were in a way each other's crutches. So we really, not that we didn't, not only we didn't want to stand on our own, we weren't sure we were in such a part of a group setting. So little by little, we're like, okay, wait, hang on. I think I can stand on my own, you know? And then after that, everybody went off onto their um, new adventures. And I mean, every one of them are so successful. And then, so after Diversity 5, I went into fitness industry. Mm -hmm. Yes, I had a great friend who was an ISBB um, bodybuilder and he was my trainer. And he just said, hey, you know, now that you have all this time and you're in town, why don't you just kind of get serious. So that was my focus. And it was great because um, it takes so much, not only physical um, effort, but so much mental effort, you know, because sure. I mean, you're hungry 24 seven. I mean, you're like, let me tell you. So, so I couldn't have anything sweet, obviously. And yeah. I'm like, wait a minute, you're not even gonna let me go through a detox, you know, step by step. They're like, he's like, no. So I could only eat some kind of like a bland fish at some point. So I'm like, all right, I have to have my sugar fix. So I would spray not just butter on just big white fish and I would sprinkle Splenda on it. 
that was like my way of um, craving my little bit of sugar craving. But sure. I have to say, um, it was great. So with NPC, which is the amateur level of ICD, um, mm -hmm. you start off at the bottom and then you do local shows and then you have to place within one or two and then you go to regional and then whatnot. So after a couple of years, I actually got on the stage of junior nationals, which is just, you know, one of the, it, it's like their national show for the top placers of regional shows. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, so that was it. And then that's when I started dating my current husband. And from there, I mean, you, you say wedding to any girl and she's like, it's like squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, you're like fitness magazines, you know, right. And eating and drinking protein shakes to like walking around with like arms full of bridal magazines. <laughs> so from there, obviously, um, the wedding and, you know, we, I mean, our daughter came about 11 months after that. No, 10 months after that. So you can do the math. Yeah. So it's I been from, yeah. So it wasn't a lot of idle time and a lot of sitting around. The, the last WCW question I have for you is... Oh, you can, yes, I'm, I'm open for it. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Well, nowadays in 2021, it's kind of weird how cool WCW has become again because so much of the town has wound up in AEW, other wrestling companies and all that. Whereas the first few years after WCW was kind of like a everyone wanted to move on. I was curious... Yeah, mm -hmm. it, for better or for worse, that's what it was. And then like mm -hmm. any band that breaks up, like any movie that's been a hit, a couple of years, no one wants to think about it. And then 15 year, 20 year, the big anniversary and the big push. I'm curious when you started to notice, hey, WCW was pretty cool. Um, one word to explain that, nostalgia. Nostalgia. Right? Because even look at Friends, I mean, there's a reason why they did they waited 20 something years for the reunion, right? Because I always say when something was really popular and it goes off the air, you meet, you know, you you can ride the wave for a little bit, but after that you kind of become a has been for a while. But but I, I want to say 20 years is that mark when people kind of be like, wow, I remember when I was in college, you know, with my fraternity brothers. I remember you know, sitting with my dad in high school on Monday night and, you know, and, and it just becomes, you know, because, if, you know, let's face it, adulting, it's not fun, right? So especially when you're kind of in that sweet spot of like high school or college or even like right outside of college where you have your independence, then you realize and you push towards into your 20s and then like, I'm like, wow, this adulting is not fun. So 20 years later, when you see something that you used to really enjoy during your carefree, careless days, when mm -hmm. really all you had to worry about is like maybe a math exam or a science exam the next right. day, you know? So I think that's what it's tied to is that nostalgia being part of, um, part of life that, that seems so far away, but it was also your own. Fair. Well, we were connected because of an old WCW friend of yours and a current contact of mine, Ross Foreman, yeah. who said, hey, Trey's got this great thing called- Oh my God, you just sounded just like her when you said, hey. Did you mean to do that? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, did not awesome. mean to do that. Yeah. Uh, so when exactly did Ring Along come about with the idea and the concept of that versus getting it onto the market with a Kickstarter? Was yeah. it a year, two years, a month? Oh, no. It's been, I've been pregnant with this baby for a long time. It's like, I call it my fourth child. So um, with so much traveling, you know, and with, especially with girls, we're pretty high maintenance, as you know, when it comes to like, you know, my husband can get ready for a trip like that. I mean, he's got his little toiletry kit, but I have to like literally make a list and just plan it out to make sure that, God forbid, I don't forget my dry shampoo. <laughs> because, right. yeah, yeah. So, um, so I, the, the frustration was there when I was traveling, but it's nowhere near the frustration when you have, when you have kids. Not only just a baby, after that, you know, you have a toddler and then an infant comes along. And all of a sudden, you're just like, you know, you are like, I mean, you know, you have to be ready to, because at any point your kid could starve to death and at least they act like it. 
or they have a boo-boo and they're about to bleed to that. So mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're like walking drugstore, anything from the snack aisles to, you know, butt white aisles to, you know what I mean? Like toothache aisle, you know, or butt cream aisle, whatever. So, um, so I was struggling to just keep everything organized. And let me tell you too, the diaper bags were fine because it has like multi pockets, but even so then you're still, you forget where you put it. Right. You're still looking through it. Right. So, um, and then, but what, what I would always go back to is just separate, just random pouches. Like in the girls know this as like makeup bags. They come in different sizes, different material. Well, here's the thing. So my, um, at one point, I think when our daughter was a toddler and we, I had my number two, my husband gifted me my dream tote bag. You know, it's the designer tote bag. And I'm like, I am so tired of this diaper bag. I, you know, like just because you're a mom, like I didn't want to say that my good ears are gone with my red bikinis. You know what I mean? Like I want to bring some fashion back just because I'm a mom. I don't have to look frumpy and walk around with this, you know, diaper bag. So I try to make this fancy tote bag work. Of course, I'm just drowning in just, I'm, this is what I do every day, you know? And um, so I would always end up with hodgepodge pouches. And even so then again, I'm digging and I thought, okay, one day I said, how can I keep this all together where I can just kind of pull it out and everything's like right there in front of me. And how can I just display it in a way that I don't even have to, it's like, I don't even have to do this. I can just, it's just right there. So I thought, oh, okay. How about if I put grommets and corners of the bag, like holes, and then have like a spring ring and keep it all together right? Then I thought, okay, then even so then I'm having to turn the ring to find the opening to get the ring out, the grommet, which is fixed round circle. And then through the years, like one idea, you know, came after another. I'm like, what about if I do a spring ring on the corners too, a small one? So that way it doesn't matter where the opening is on the big ring. I can just push on the small ring, um, you know, take it out, and then the way that it's set up, all you have to do is just push it and it clicks back in. And also on top of that, like if this was a bag, and I should have had my bag too with me, what was I thinking? But um, so that's like the corner. And then I have another spring ring on this corner. So now guess what? Any of those storage pouches that you have in your purse, which by the way, is neatly displayed because what you do is you put the big ring, I call it whole string around the strap. So everything is lifted up. Um, so with that additional ring, you can take any of those bags with you separately with a click of a strap. So, um, let's say you're at a playground and over a play day, you don't have to take like half of the CVS aisle with you, you know, with baby products. If you just know you're going to be gone for an hour, you're only going to really need diaper and, and, you know, and wipes. So you just take the pouch out with the diaper and the wipes click on like a crossbody strap. So you leave what you don't need in the car covered safe and you just take what you need, leaving everything what you don't behind. It's, it's that concept. And at first I'm like, okay, I was just, there's no way that just starting. I mean, I've done, I've had an amazing life, so many amazing opportunities, but creating especially in the industry that I know nothing about. I'm like, I'm not, who am I to do that? And, um, and not to mention, so um, I knew that if anybody in the bag industry would see my concept, they would have it out in the store shelves, even before I can finish my morning coffee. Right. So, yeah. So what I told myself was, I'm going to see if I can get a utility patent on this, not design, but utility patent, which is just pretty ironclad when it comes to utility of function of a product. So I applied for it about three and a half years ago. And the lawyers, they can't promise anything. Right. Um, because they can't, but they really felt really strong. So I was feeling pretty positive. And then I got my patent. And then there was a lot of delay because of the pandemic. And um, um, so I got my patent this past February. Oh, okay. And I was, yeah. And I was in a rush to get Kickstarter out the door because two years prior to that, you know, when the Shark Tank came to Dallas for in-person edition, I put on my big girl britches and I'm like, I'm going to go down there and show my idea, you know, thinking that, you know, so 
I went with my homemade prototype that I made. I, I hand sewed the rings on. And, uh, and the girl was genuinely interested. She said, oh, so what's your sales? I'm like, nothing. These are my... Yeah, Shark Tank doesn't like it when you go, <sighs> I've got a great idea, but zero sales. Right. And kill some of the best ideas that they get. Right. And that's why she said, okay, well, let me tell you, um, go get some sales. And she said, a Kickstarter counts and get your patent and come back next year. Well, they didn't have in-person additions for two years in a row. Right. And um, so immediately when I got my patent, I'm like, okay, I just now need some sales. And she said, Kickstarter works too. So of course, I am like jack of all trades. I have late night dates with YouTube and Google, you know, trying to figure out about the bag industry and what Kickstarter mm -hmm. is and read all the books. And, and my hope was finish a campaign by their deadline submission, submission deadline in the June. Oh my gosh, it is so, it being a one man show, self teaching how to graphic design. One time, the first time I used iMovie, it took me four hours to do a 19 second video because I'm pausing, yeah. you know. So anyway, so, um, I, um, obviously I wasn't going to make the, in time, the campaign, but I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to quit. I'm going to still keep pushing it. I'm going to finish my prep work and I'm going to launch it. So I ended up launching it, um, this past, you know, yeah, the 15th of August. And not the first person from WCW to try and go on Shark Tank. Did it, you know what? I did call my DDT. I did call him and he was so wise. Um, yeah. Yes, he was, he was amazing. He was really wise. And in pretty much what he said was, you know, Che, you know, and also too, it's a big deal that I have an IP. Um, he says they love utility patents and he said, but you know, yeah, I'm sure it's great, but it's like, you don't, you have in you to do whatever you want to do. You know, he was great. I mean, like motivation. You know how DDP is. Yeah, that that yeah. sounds like the most Dallas answer. Yeah, ever. it you is. You didn't right? put any bros in your respect right. there. Right, right. Well, no, it's a few slipped out here and there. <laughs> exactly. So uh, yeah. I mentioned the name, the name before, Mama Bear Brands. Yeah. So sounds like this is not the only product that you're planning on launching. You don't have to give I, me exclusive. No, 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 no. I have a big vision. I have to say like, I am like at kindergarten level right now, but I already have my, what I'm going to do with my, in my college graduate program. Right. Yeah. Um, I have, I have a big vision and I know, I, I guess like in a way I am, um, it's kind of in me to be entrepreneurial um, and also to, you know, my parents, um, we came here when I was 11, my, mm -hmm. my two older brothers and I and my parents, and, you know, none of us knew how to speak English and we barely had a pocket full of change. And, uh, and my parents showed what it was to really, if you worked hard, I mean, this is land of opportunity, you can achieve any American dream. And, and I am, I am a living proof of that. And, and, and what I realized one day was because my daughter said, Hey, you know, mommy, if you like this so much, why don't you make it for other people? And I thought, okay, this isn't really about me. This is something greater than me. And along the way I can teach my kids and I can instill in them what my parents did by example. So that was like my big kick in the butt. And then I said, you know what, I'm going to, you know, go for it. And as they say, um, it's not a failure if you restart from experience or lesson. So, yeah. And then where are the best places that people should go to find out more about the product and the parent company and everything that you have going on? Give me the self-promotion spiel right there. The, for self-promotion spiel, well, it's more like I am begging. Like I, so I can't um, go to the second level until I leave the first level. Right. Yes. And then everything, you know, and everything in life is about taking steps. And I am now, you know, and, and I know the importance of taking each step because there's a lesson that comes in every stage of your life or in business. So I'm not wanting to skip anything. So right now, the biggest thing is um, a cr successful crowdfunding campaign. Mm -hmm. So um, I have so 311 is a very special number. It's always been 311. So my goal right now is um, for crowdfunding for Kickstarter is um, $10,311. And 
So my end date for my campaign is September 25th at 3.11. <laughs> you know, when, when you help, you know. Anyway, so, um, so really, I really would love to see this through. I mean, I go through a lot of roller coaster, um, you know, and, and it's hard not to associate my, attach my self-worthness to the success of the product. I try not to do that, you know, but at the same time, it just, it would mean the world to me if I can um, successfully complete my first campaign. Well, I hope to get this out into the world within the next few days and we will help promote this. The last question that I have, which has nothing to do with you okay. or your success or ring along, it's okay. what's a TV show that we should be watching if we need a new show to be starting soon? Um, that's already existing or that's, that's not? That already exists, whether it's a Hulu, Netflix, oh. um, TV, et cetera, because, uh, you obviously know a thing or two about entertainment and you yourself have a couple hundred hours of television under your belt. But you know what? I don't, you know, obviously we have everything because of our kids. And, um, and right now my husband is big into Amazon Prime and my kids are obviously into Netflix. And I myself is just into, um, you know, I'm, I'm a big audio book junkie. So I'm not much into... TV and you know if I watch any kind of TV, I love documentaries. I'm not really into um, fiction, um, so I you know what like I let my husband plug Amazon Prime and then my kids plug you know Netflix. Mm -hmm. But I have to say I read your bio and oh my gosh, what have you not done? Well, until an hour ago, interview you. That's that's the the thing I had not done. So um, well. <laughs> And you know what? And I bet you are just breaking in on all. Yes, it's, it's, it's amazing. I, my eyes were crossed. I'm like, oh my gosh, I lost track after third publication and fifth publication. And it goes on and on. Thank so congrats, you. congrats to you too. And you're, I mean, obviously you are just coming big success. You're too kind, Volche. Thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to this campaign being successfully funded and the next steps, the next level and all that. Keep yeah. up the greatness in the meantime. Oh, Darren, thank you so much. This was so fun. You got it. Have a great okay. rest of the day. Take care. Thanks, Darren. Outrocast.